so good evening to all once again so next nice topic uh, today uh, we will start about industrial microbiology okay this is our next topic that is industrial microbiology uh, basically this topic is a little bit related to commercial production of various enzymes chemicals commercial production of various compounds from fungi bacteria okay so most of the concept belongs to the industrial level how we can use the microbes in industry what are their products how we can do uh, their processing in the market so all this comes in the industrial microbiology <coughs> now before proceeding further we should know that what is industrial microbiology as the name suggest industrial means use of industry microbiology means use of microbes means how we can apply the microbes to get some fruitful product in the industry which can grow the industry at commercial level or business level so how we can define this industrial microbiology is the commercial exploitation of microorganisms commercial exploitation means not that kind of exploitation which we do in the college means how we can use them in the best possible way okay okay so industrial microbiology is the commercial exploitation of microbes to produce valuable economic environmental and socially important products to carry out important chemical transformation it means how we can use how we can produce the microbes at commercial level so that we can get the desired product in very cheap cost and which are environment friendly which are useful for the consumers okay all that thing which we are basically doing by performing some reactions at large level in the various industries so <coughs> all this comes in the industrial microbiology right so we can define it as a commercial exploitation of microbes to produce valuable economic environmental and socially important products or to carry out important chemical transformation this is the basic definition of industrial microbiology okay recently it has it uh, industrial microbiology has vast application like in the field of dairy industry alcohol industry processing industry okay production of useful chemicals production of useful metabolites from microbes degradation of xenobiotic compounds which are environment friendly a lot of scope is there in industrial microbiology but we should take that uh, here we have to use those microbes which are very useful for us in a well proper manner means economic planning should be done before start up this industrial microbiology the main issue is taken various permissions from the government because there is a lot of issue of pollution so whatever production we are getting through the industrial production of microbes that should be pollution free and it should help the people to lead a better economical life so i have written one word socially important products this can be sold by the local people and they can earn their live livelihood and to carry out important chemical transformation means all these products we are getting by certain chemical reactions which we are doing in the industry at global level or at large level as compared to small scale industries okay then one of the main aspect of industrial microbiology is fermentation we all know this word what is fermentation respiration in the absence of oxygen means those reactions which are carried carried out in the presence of carbon dioxide not in the presence of oxygen we all know which is the main product alcohol a lot of products are there like food beverage food additives and supplements food beverage food additives and supplements <coughs> it includes dairy products also that dairy products are like yogurt cheese paneer shrikhand all that are fermented products 
okay these are having good nutrition value also okay so dairy products includes yogurt cheese paneer chicken many products are there then third thing is alcoholic beverages like beer wine whiskey champion i will tell you very very interesting thing that consumption of alcohol do no doubt consumption of alcohol is harmful for us but in indian economy maximum contribution in the gdp of indian economy is to the production of alcohol because most of the people are daily consume consumer of alcohol okay so another aspect is production of alcohol very sundry industries are there for different like beer wine whiskey champion rum brandy etc lot of alcoholic beverages are there but the government has put the limitation that the percentage of alcohol should be limited okay one more interesting thing that 8 ml alcohol a day is a tonic for human being okay 8 ml alcohol a day is a tonic for human being but if the quantity increase then it is bad because excess of everything is bad then next production is of various amino acids various proteins various vitamins which are having good medicinal value so what are the main products of fermentation food beverages various supplements yogurt cheese alcoholic products amino acids and vitamins which can contribute to the gdp of our country and which normal people can consume to improve their health and economic value so these are the main products of the fermentation then besides that we require certain enzymes which are very very important to perform many chemi chemical reactions like protease this protease enzyme is used to carry out for the cleavage of protein or for the artificial production of protein from the amino acids or they are also used in the production of amino acids from proteins then carbohydrolysis means production of sucrose maltose lactose in which this includes the uh, substrate of carbohydrates as the name suggest i told you in the last lecture also regarding enzyme okay so production of certain microbial enzymes like protease carbohydrates tag polymerase tag polymerase is very very important en enzyme which is used in the field of genetic engineering that is in the field of recombinant dna technology mainly it is used in the pcr polymerase chain reaction nowadays lot of people we know that about covid so many people are going testing for the covid by pcr so in that pcr they have to use this enzyme which is called as tag polymerase okay basically many enzymes are there but sir we will discuss about only important one which are of great value so these enzymes are proteins carbohydrates tag polymerase besides that there are lot of production of chemicals and fuels which are required in the industries to carry out the research in the laboratories to run some biogas plant to run some bio reactors and that chemicals industrial includes <coughs> methane ethanol hydrogen propane propane we know it is used in the gas also it is used in the fuel in the rocket propellant also methane is a biogas which is produced at very large level chemicals like ethanol it is having wide demand it is used as a disinfectant in various laboratories it is a subset of many reaction hydrogen gas we require for the production of many important compound okay so these are the main industrial chemicals and fuels which are produced through industrial microbiology then we discuss very very important role i told you that we should focus on that microbes which are having eco friendly nature which are environmental free so what are these environmental roles so there are certain environmental roles of these microbes like waste water treatment desulfurization of fuels leaching of metals use of microbes to reduce use of synthetic pesticides waste water treatment desulfurization of fuels leaching of metals means to absorb the heavy metals from the soil use of microbes 
to reduce usage of synthetic pesticides okay use of microbes to reduce usage of synthetic pesticides because i told you synthetic pesticides are having many several advantage disadvantages like they are toxic for the plants okay they can cause many diseases in the plant okay so we have to basically focus on i told you on previous lectures you have to focus on bio pesticides i told you about water bio pesticides how we can produce them so these are the main role of <coughs> microbes in the environment waste water treatment it means to make water free from the pollution control the bod cod level second is desulfurization of fuels leaching of metals so that they cannot be very toxic the heavy metals which are toxic can be removed completely and to prepare bio pesticides which are originated based from microbes then see here we are seeing the total overview how this fermentation process is done okay see basically it includes two types of method up processing upstream processing and downstream processing upstream processing and downstream processing as we can see in that figure that upstream is upside downstream is downside it is not related to the level that upstream will always be upside downstream is always a downside so first of all what we have to do first of all we have to do, go for fermentation of raw materials then in upstream processing means that process which we start from the beginning is called as upstream means prior to the fermentation and downstream processing means post fermentation up upstream processing means before downstream processing means later on so during the pro process of fermentation or before the fermentation we have to do basic fermentation of raw materials we have to do production of microbes after that we have to go for downstream processing that is purification of product okay so purification of product and we will give it gives us the product so this fermentation of raw material will also give gives us effluent wastes this fermentation of raw materials will gives us effluent wastes this is the general procedure for the fermentation process upstream processing means that process which is has been done before the fermentation and downstream processing is that process which is done besides after the fermentation process so this was about that then <coughs> first we will discuss about the because before the fermentation not of not so much thing and technology is required basic experimentation is done after the fermentation process which is very very important so in the upstream process we have to just manage the about electricity supply manpower supply money supply just very small things which we can manage production of raw material should be ready but the game story begins after the fermentation process that is important so what is downstream processing those processing which includes all process after fermentation okay those process which includes all process after fermentation it involves cell harvesting suppose we are isolating some protein from the cell either from the cell of bacteria or from the cell of fungi so what we have to do first of all we have to collect the harvesting of cell then anything to take out something we have to break something so we will go for disruption of cell to break the cell wall then we will take the protein we know that that protein is initially not pure we know that initially that protein is initially not pure so what we will do we will go for the product purification from the cell extracts or from the growth medium now this purification is done from many techniques which we will discuss later in this lecture so what is the initial step collection of cell harvesting 
breaking of cell membrane cell disruption product purification from cell extracts so we can purify the products then this process must be rapid and efficient to purify product and to maintain stability of product so this process should be very very fast and it should be very very efficient because what we want we want to obtain the pure products and to maintain stability of product okay and this method should be safe and inexpensive to dispose of various wastage this method should be safe and inexpensive to dispose of wastage right okay fine so these are the major steps which are used in the downstream processing so they, it includes cell harvesting cell disruption product purification from cell extract the method must be rapid and efficient to purify the product and to maintain stability of product and the method should be safe and inexpensive to dispose of various wastes means that material which we do not want which we can dispose easily and the method should be very very safe so these are the general steps which are done in the downstream processing then <coughs> next steps comes that how we can remove the unwanted particles means that particles or we can say that insolubles which we do not want so it includes how we can do separation of cells or cell debris or other particulate matter which we do not want so again there are several methods for typical operations from that we can remove the insolubles okay from that we can remove the insolubles that method is what little bit filtration centrifugation sedimentation procuration a process where a solute comes out of solution in the form of flakes and gravity settling so these methods in includes what filtration centrifugation sedimentation procuration a process where solute comes out of the solution in the form of flakes we will discuss each method in detail and finally gravity uh, gravity settling <coughs> and finally gravity settling so these are the methods which are used for removal of insolubles or unwanted particles which we do not want now we will describe actually each and every metal in the detail each and every process in the detail okay every method should be take care with very carefully okay so first of all we will discuss about filtration they as the name suggest what is filtration to filter something to get the useful products and remove the undesired product outside so this filtration is the mechanical method this filtration is the mechanical method it is used for the separation of solid from fluids this method is used for the separation of solids from fluids either liquids or gases either liquids or gases by interposing the medium by interposing the medium means through certain medium which is having certain membrane porous membrane so that required particles which are small in size can come out of this membrane through which this fluid can pass and but the unwanted material or solid particle in the fluids are retained they cannot pass the membrane so what is filtration it is the mechanical method in which we put the solution and from the solution we are putting certain membranes it is having some por porous size so useful materials which are small in size passes out through that membrane and the remaining debris or unwanted material it remains on the which is solid in nature it remains on the membrane and then we discard it solid material so filtered material we can use for the future use so 
this method can be used both in solid liquid okay mainly applied in the uh, lot of industries this method filtration okay then comes out another method we will continue the filtration method so what will happen <coughs> the solid particles means the debris particles which are deposited on the filter form the layer means which are deposited on the upside of the membrane which are not passed they are called as filter cakes they are called as filter cakes and remaining all the other solid particles from the feed or from the raw material they are stopped by this filter cake and this filter cake increases at the rate at which particles are brought to the surface means when the particles are coming filtering again and again again and again lot of waste material deposit on the surface of membrane on the filter surface of filter paper so remaining fluid all of the fluid that passed through the cake will filter in the medium okay so remaining particles remaining liquid particle or small particles which you require they will bypass to this filter because it is having some porous membrane okay because it is having some porous membrane so it will bypass it so this is the process which is completed of the filtration right so all case is of only particles only unwanted cellular debris particles they are solid particles they are deposited by repeated process they are called as filter cake and this filter cake will not allow the another residue material to pass through it it will just allow the liquid fluid which is of our use through that membrane and that membrane can contain some porous space through which that liquid particle will pass so this method was called as filtration separation of fluid from the solid particles using some mechanical techniques okay then we see another method is by rotatory filter see this it is a instrument of rotatory filter it contains central vacuum tube tube it contains liquid filtrate the means that part which we want to apply from this rotatory filter there is a perforation perforated drum which opens in the central vacuum tube with the help of knife we will take the cell mass these are the hollow spokes because it will rotate in the centrifugal direction so once it rotate lot of moss will collect on the surface of filter tube so fluid particle we can see in the form of droplets they are passing and the remaining solid particle will remain on the upside of this filter okay so what will happen once the liquid particle liquid filtrate we will absorb we will collect we will put in the vacuum pump and it will rotate and it will go for the further purification process So what is this? This is the steps of continuous rotatory filter. It contains certain drum-like structure which opens in the waste particle. It contains central vacuum tube. It contains hollow spokes. Filter is applied. Filter is applied. The knife cell mass is collected. So the required material will pass through the droplets, and the remaining part will remain on the solid surface. So this is the method by which we can <coughs> do the process of rotatory filter. okay so we have to what is the advantage of using this technology first of all it will automatically separate the liquid particles from the solid particle solid debris which we are of use then we can keep it in another place since this filter is having porous in size small pores are there so the filtrate material mainly it is a liquid form it can pass very easily okay that liquid part can easily pass through the filtrate so minimum resistance is required in the filtrate okay minimum resistance is required to flow the filtrate okay they are also providing resistance to chemical attack they also provide resistance to the chemical attack these rotatory filter are not affected by any chemicals 
ओके बिकॉज मेनी केमिकल्स लाइक सल्फरिक एसिड नाइट्रिक एसिड आर हार्मफुल सो दीज रोटेटरी फिल्टर्स आर हैविंग द रेजिस्टेंस प्रॉपर्टी दे आर नॉट कोरोसिव दे आर नॉट कोरोडेड बाय दिस यूज ऑफ केमिकल द कॉस्ट इज वेरी लेस दे कैन बी यूज एट मिनिमम कॉस्ट एंड देयर सेल्फ लाइफ देयर लाइफ इज वेरी वेरी गुड अप्रोक्सीमेटली वन रोटेटरी फिल्टर will work around 10 to 15 years without any problem it just want minimum repairing so it can work smoothly okay so what are the advantages ability to build solid minimum resistance to flow of filtrate resistance to chemical attack minimum cost and long life these are the advantages which are required the next steps comes out to be centrifugation as the name suggest centrifuge we know our earth rotates in a centrifugal manner rotates on the common scale same concept apply here there is an instrument called as centrifuge which rotates on the principle of centrifugal force so the centrifugation is the process it is used to separate particles of 100 to 0.1 micrometer from liquid by gravitational force okay so centrifugation is used to separate particles of 100 to 0.1 micrometer from liquid by gravitational force means rotating by the gravitational force <coughs> okay it depends on particle size density difference between the cells and the broth and the broth viscosity this centrifugation depends on the particle size higher particle big particle more time will take small particle less in weight small time will take and it depends on the medium what is the viscosity of the broth broth i told you liquid media and what is the viscosity whether it is dense light heavy okay and it it basically based on the centrifugal force for the separation of mixture it is normally based on the centrifugal force for the separation of mixture then again more dense components migrate away from the axis of the centrifuge when we do the centrifuge it will separate the light particles from the heavy particles so heavy particles will come on one side light particles will come on another side okay and like what i told less dense particle will migrate toward the axis so basically there are different types of centrifugal machines which are used like tubular bowl centrifugal multi chamber centrifuge disk bowl centrifuge tubular bowl centrifuge multi chamber centrifuge and disk bowl centrifuge so these three types of centrifuge are in common use suppose we put the solution in the centrifuge machine for this machine to rotate as a centrifugal force we have to provide certain speed and certain time okay we have to keep some rotation per minute we have to adjust the rotation per minute so that it can rotate and time interval for 10 to 15 minutes okay so what will happen in centrifuge suppose there is solution we go for centrifugation the instrument will rotate based on centrifugal force after that we found that it will separate two layers of particle the solution will be separated in two layers one in solid one in liquid the liquid part will come over the solid part so that liquid part is called as supernatant liquid part which is separated from the solution is called as supernatant and the solid part is called as pellet and the solid part is called as pellet or we can call as debris so we can easily separate the useful particles from the non useful particles means either we require supernatant either we require pellet it depends upon the experiment so it can create it can differentiate based on two phases liquid and solid liquid phase is called as supernatant solid phase is called as pellet so this is the whole procedure of centrifuge next process is called as flocculation and i told you it is the process in which there is separation of solute and solvent in the solution there is a separation of solute and solvent in the solution 
so solute will come out of the solution in the form of flocks or flakes okay the solute will come out from the solution in the form of flocks or flakes particles finer than 0.1 micrometer in water remain continuously in motion those particles which are very small in size in fact which is less than 0.1 micrometer in water they remain continuously they, they move they move why because due to electrostatic charge which cause them to repel each other as you know that same charges repel opposite charges attract so particles finer than 0.1 micrometer in water remain continuously in motion due to electrostatic charge which causes them to repel with each other <coughs> once their electrostatic charge is neutralized suppose both charges are balanced however it is not easy to neutralize this charge we have to use certain coagulating agent it is not easy to balance this charge we have to use certain coagulating agent so what will happen the finer particle will start to collide and combine together the finer particle start to collide and combine together okay so these larger and heavier particles are called as flocks so this particles which are larger and heavier in size they are called as flocks it means the solute will contain or the larger and heavier particles it will differentiate the larger heavy particles from the solution but particles less than 0.1 micrometer in water they will even continuous motion due to electro electrostatic force and this force is having the same charges so for that we have to use certain coagulating agent which can overcome this problem what will happen the fine particle will combine together and the heavy particle will combine together they will they will form flocks so these larger and heavier particles are called as flocks so this step is called as flocculation <coughs> then we come to the next process called as liquid liquid extraction this process is called as what liquid liquid extraction okay so it is a separation process that takes the advantage of the relative solubilities of solute in immiscible solvents it is a separation process that takes the advantage of relative solubilities of solute in immiscible solvents okay so what i told it is the separation process that takes the advantage of the relative solubilities of solute in immiscible solvents immiscible solvent means which can be easily separated based on their polarity <coughs> so solute is those solvent which are heavier they will take more time means non polar and this those which are polar they will separate easily so here solute is dissolved more readily and it is become more concentrated in the solvent as compared so when different types of solute are there solute is dissolved more readily and become more concentrated in the solvent in which it has higher solubility okay so what will happen after that time some partial separation will occur because the num because the solubility of all the solutes is not same okay the solubility of all the solutes is not same so a partial separation occurs when a number of solutes have different relative solubilities <coughs> a partial separation occurs when a number of solutes have different relative solubilities in the two solvents used so what will happen a partial separation occurs when a number of solutes have different relative solubilities in the two solvent used okay it means what separation normally based on solubility because 
both the two solvents they have different different relative solubilities here but what is important the solvent should be non toxic it should be selective it should be inexpensive and immiscible with broth and should have a high distribution coefficient for the product okay the solvent should be non toxic selective inexpensive and immiscible with broth and should have a high distribution coefficient for the product okay is that clear solvent should be non toxic selective inexpensive and immiscible with broth and should have the high distribution coefficient for the product then we discuss about next process that is called as adsorption it is as adsorption it is adsorption this phenomena basically is a surface phenomena it is normally physical process which we can observe absorb so it is a surface phenomena so what is the protocol in that it is the binding of molecules to the surface it is the binding of molecules to the surface which is different from adsorption it is the binding of molecules to the surface which is different from the adsorption right what i told it is the binding of molecules to the surface which is different from the adsorption the binding of the surface is very weak and reversible when the molecule bind to the surface they are not absorbed they are adsorbed it is a different phenomena so the binding surface should be very weak and reversible okay compounds containing chromogenic group are usually strongly absorbed on activated carbon those compounds which are having chromogenic group chromogenic means which have certain color colorful compounds which are having certain tannins anthocyanins flavones flavonoids which are colored they are strong they are they are strongly absorbed absorbed at the faster rate on activated carbon because activated carbon possesses certain kind of space which has covalent bonding so binding of this groups will help to dissolve that compound very easily here the binding is very strong the common adsorbent used are activated carbon silica gel when you pour any compound in the silica gel what will happen that compound easily adsorbed in the silica gel immediately moisture is finished why because it is based on the binding capacity the common adsorbent used are activated carbon silica gel aluminum because they present enormous surface areas per unit weight because they present enormous surface areas per unit weight <coughs> then we discuss about chromatography chromatography is the most widely used technique in the field when we work for certain natural products for herbal products what is chromatography is used for separation of mixture now what is the principle of this chromatography basically it contains two phases mobile phase and stationary phase so what is stationary phase it is the solvent which completely moves towards the which moves with the solvent and mobile phase which is stable which is which separates the analyze to be measured from other molecules in the mixture and allows to be isolated what happens actually suppose we are doing chromatography we put the sample in the certain solvent the sample will move around the solvent the sample is in the mobile phase but the solvent is in the stationary stationary phase a stationary phase which remains uh, remains stable and solute and the compound which you want to separate will move around the solvent then based on the resolution factor we can calculate the compound's name based on rf value that is called as distance covered by solute upon distance covered by solvent after certain distance when we run the solvent the compound is separated so it is separated based on the mobile and the stationary phase so it is called as chromatography this compound is called as chromatography okay so it is called as chromatography which is based on stationary and mobile phase then comes another techniques ion exchange chromatography 
it is one of the most prominent techniques which are used <coughs> it is one of the most prominent techniques which are used so what is this concept here here we use charge stationary phase to separate charged compounds here what we use we use charged stationary phase to separate the charged compounds mainly resin that carries charged functional groups mainly they carries resin that carries charged functional groups which interact with oppositely charged groups of the compound to be retained resin that carries charged functional groups they interact with oppositely charged groups of the compound to be retained so means on the basis of ion they will separate the compounds based on the charge and resins are some compounds which are having some porous in nature they will interact the compounds and separate the compounds based on the charge we can see in this figure that positively charged protein binds to negatively charged molecules and negatively charged molecule pass thoroughly so means the compounds are separated based on the charge both in the mobile phase and in the stationary phase then we discuss about affinity chromatography affinity chromatography is mainly used for the separation of proteins on the basis of reversible interaction between the antigen and the antibody here what is there antigen is labeled it is coupled with antibody with high selectivity high resolution and high capacity for the protein which we want to separate purification of protein is done thousand times once the antibody is coupled with the antigen which is already labeled and we want to separate the protein of interest what we will do we will with highly specificity and selectivity we will separate the protein thousand times if we, after that what will happen the protein of interest is collected and is purified in the concentrated form the protein is collected and is purified in the concentrated form and the biological interactions between the antigens and the protein of interest can result from the electrostatic interaction okay biological interaction between the antigen and the protein of interest can result from electrostatic interaction because of certain force like van der waals force is there hydrogen bonding is there now we want to after purification of protein we want to elute we want to take out that protein of interest using some beds from the affinity beds that's why it is called as affinity chromatography so the interaction can be reversed by changing the ph or by changing the ionic strength the affinity can be changed by changing the ph or the affinity strength the concentration effects enables large volume of proteins to be processed the protein of interest can be purified at very high level so making antibodies to couple with the antigen of interest is very expensive so affinity chromatography is the best economical technique we can easily separate the protein we can see in this diagram it is labeled antigen it is the antibody which is coupled for a specific antigen here different antibodies are there of different specificity they are inserted in the antigen with the matrix so it will separate the non binded antibody protein so it is used to easily separate both binded unlabeled and labeled antigen in the form of protein from the different unlabeled proteins and that protein which is of prime importance we can elute out same as the concept of chromatography using some affinity beds that's what is called as affinity chromatography okay very simple technique is there very economical next technique is called as size extrusion chromatography size extrusion chromatography in that see this figure it is also called as gel permeation or filtration chromatography it is called as gel permeation and filtration chromatography they separate molecules according to their size mainly they separate tertiary and quaternary structure of protein mainly they separate tertiary and quaternary structure of protein we can see in this figure that it is having the column column beds are there in that porous particles are put in that porous particles are put after that what will happen they will separate small molecules from the large molecules <coughs> after that they will separate 
small molecules from the large molecules so it is called a size exclusion chromatography then comes liquid chromatography okay normally it is done in hplc high performance liquid chromatography it contains columns called as c18 columns sample is forged to the column some fluorite is decided some sam solvent is decided based on the compound we have to decide the flow rate of the sample normally it is kept as 1 ml per minute solvent we have to decide which hplc grade solvent we are to use which compound we want to separate so in the hplc the sample is forged to the column it is packed with irregularly or spherically shaped particles it is packed with irregularly or spherically shaped particles or with the help of porous monolithic layer or with the help of porous monolithic layer okay with the help of porous monolithic layer that is stationary phase which can separate it by the liquid that is the mobile phase and the pressure is very very high that's what is called as high pressure liquid chromatography so what here we are doing same here uh, the sol uh, the compound the sample which you want to separate is pushed in the column c18 column it is packed in the c18 column it is having some silica beds we apply some solvent we apply the high pressure so both stationary phase and mobile phase start running at particular flow rate and later on the compound is separated at the high pressure so liquid chromatography is also called as high performance liquid chromatography and last is diffusion it means to freeze the material it is used to reduce the surrounding pressure and adding enough heat to allow the frozen water in the material to sublime directly from the solid phase to the gas here what is happened directly we are lyophilizing the solution normally it is used for freezing the material and also converting solute phase directly to the gaseous phase by applying enough heat so here what we are doing we are applying enough heat to allow to convert the frozen water in the material to sublime directly from the solute phase to the gaseous phase so it is called as lyophilization so these were the basic concept of fermentation technology how we can produce and separate the various compounds so i hope this lecture could understand the basic concept about about industrial microbiology so thank you very much thank you